We have changed Manchester City and we are here to prove two things. Number one, we are better than Pep Guardiola. And number two, defensive football works in Football Manager. Hello people and welcome back to another reinventing video where I take a team and I kind of change their style of play to what they typically use in real life. So Manchester City for an example, in this video, Manchester City do like to play tiki taka, but today we have turned them into a defensive minded team. There is a kind of a myth around defensive tactics in Football Manager. Some people tend to think that they don't work. I used to be one of those people until, until I read a book that was written by Cleon and we're going to head over to the website now. View from the Touchline is a very good football manager website. I highly recommend it, but they also have the football manager playbook. Again, I highly recommend you download that ASAP. The link will be in the description below. So this article is about his 442 diamond block, and we're not going to go into too much detail because I might possibly cover this tactic in the future on this channel, but we can read the beginning. One of the biggest myths in football manager is that you cannot play a low block and be successful as a strategy for 90 minutes in every match. This article is going to highlight exactly exactly why that is a myth for this project i'm going to write about my time at i mean this is a team in iceland i definitely cannot pronounce that team's name where he used a 442 diamond low block getting a low block to work is not an easy task and can be highly frustrating it requires a massive amount of patience to get right and attention to detail preach brother preach. Defensive football can actually take on many different interpretations and doesn't have to be associated with playing a low block and camping inside your own half. Defensive football can be a side that is possession focused and doesn't give the ball away. Another version can be a team that presses the opposition heavily from the front. It has many forms that it can take on. But the identity that he wanted to create but also that we created at Manchester City is one that relies on playing a low block with the intention of staying solid and compact while absorbing pressure pressure then when the chance arises counter attack he loves playing this style of football in football manager admittedly i did struggle to create this style of football in football manager but now we have got a tactic finally working so what we're going to do right now is go into football manager and have a deep dive into this 4141 tactic so if you are new or you haven't yet make sure you are subscribed make sure you like this video leave a comment as well really help the engagement on these videos but also make sure you send in your request what team should i do next and what kind of style of football should i do next what formation send in some requests in the comments let me know I have a couple images of what I wanted to achieve in Football Manager. So the first one here is our shape of the ball against Manchester United. We did win this game for one, I believe. So in the yellow, the yellow marks, you can see our back line, our back four, and then our midfield five. The midfield five and the back four are keeping tight, blocking all forward pass lanes, forcing Christian Eriksen to play a risky pass. As we can see here, Christian Eriksen on the ball, trying to play the risky pass to his winger. But the man in the red comes Walker he intercepts Ericsson's ball to the winger and successfully well intercepts the pass as I've just said but then we can also see Haaland here um, highlighted in the white he's pressing Ericsson forcing that risky pass which is kind of key actually so keep that in mind for when we do go back to the tactic screen and then he looks to exploit the space as Ericsson has kind of moved away from this sort of area here leaving a gap here if Ericsson loses the ball Walker intercepts Haaland can then move into the space and possibly exploit exploit it. The second image sums us up really, really well. So Manchester United were attempting to build that from the back using Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire is a very, very decent ball progressor on the game, obviously. So again, the players marked in the yellow are keeping narrow and compact, making it very, very difficult for Manchester United to play through. So this little green area here is where we've actually trapped Harry Maguire. We've allowed Maguire to travel with the ball running into our defensive trap, which is now a 4 versus two defensive overload which can be a four versus three if we are counting the man on the ball Harry Maguire but we can see four of our defensive players here against two of Manchester United's players blocking all passing lanes and then the ball is eventually intercepted by Jack Grealish here as we can see in the red Jack Grealish intercepts Maguire's pass and plays in Haaland who is again exploiting that space that is left behind now by Harry Maguire and here is actually the video clip of that image as well so here's Maguire trying to bring the ball forward Grealish intercepts Haaland plays in Bernardo Foden gets on the ball he goes into the box and buries it but I also wanted to show you 
our shape when we are attacking because it's still slightly defensive. So once we do have the ball into the box, we've just finished our attack. The ball's falling to Stacey. He's going to play it back to Neto where Neto clears the ball. But you can see our rest defence and how we are preventing counter-attacks. Our back four allows us to cover the whole defensive area here and create a heavy defensive overload. If number 21 and number nine, their two strikers break forward, it is again going to be four versus two. But the players in white are our midfielders. The midfielders help with this rest defence shape and defensive overload as well. Around the edge of the box is their positioning to pick up loose balls or engage in breaking players. For an example, if number 10 breaks away, Jack Grealish, our number 10, can engage. If number 32 breaks away, either Carl Walker can shift over, which shouldn't happen. Kevin De Bruyne should track back. But also number 26, Riyad Mahrez, who's just inside the box, isn't too far from number 32 and can track back. Now, what we would hope for, if it was Jack Grealish in the box, then Phil Foden would be just outside it or not too distant. And what happens here is that it makes it very, very difficult for Bournemouth to then counter-attack us. So here's another clip of Manchester United running into our defensive trap. Here's Diego Delot, Harry Maguire, Rafael Varane. Now he's going to look to bring the ball forward. As you can see, nobody's engaging him until they get into our mid third of the pitch and then we break through, we get the ball and Bernardo hits his shot over the bar. But what happens if we cannot immediately counter-attack our opponents? Well, this is kind of our style of football in possession. So not really in transition, not when we've just won the ball and then we go on the attack, which is our transition play. But what happens when we do have a lengthy spell of possession? So here is Chilwell. He clears the ball. We intercept the ball. Ruben intercepts the ball. Plays it back to Bernardo. Plays it back to Ruben. He's played the ball back to Laporte. And look at what he does. He is our no-nonsense defender. He's get the ball and he just hoofs it forward to Haaland. Now, Haaland is a key player in the system. He's big. He's strong. He's fast as well. He can hold up the ball. So again, keep that in mind. So he plays the ball forward to Haaland. He knocks it to Rodrigo. And now we can release potentially two third man runners number 17 and number 20 can both break through into this little space here and it is number 17 that breaks through Kevin De Bruyne one on one and slots it in against Chelsea 3-1 so that was some of the key ideas and principles of our 4-1-4-1 shape and now we are going to create that exact tactic and we are going to start off with the team mentality which is <laughs> interesting because we aren't using cautious in fact we are using that defensive mentality really can't get any more defensive than defensive you can always go very defensive but that is very very extreme and should be used in certain situations not constantly so we are using that defensive mentality in possession we are going to keep things fairly narrow when it comes to our attacking width the passing directness as well is on slightly more direct none of that pep guardiola short passes tiki taka though pep says he doesn't play tiki taka but none of of that good fancy footwork and none of that good fancy passing movements in fact we are going to be playing slightly more direct and with the tempo slightly more higher trying to get the ball into that attacking third fairly quickly dribbling we are going to run at the defense and we are going to allow some expression in the attacking play as well because we do have players like kevin de Bruyne, bernardo silva um Gundogan, Folden, Jack Grealish and like we said before on that website we do also want to get the best out of our current players and being more expressive with players with high flair passing technique is always a good way to go. In the final third we are also going to send in low crosses but that's just my preference you do not have to use that whatsoever. In transition when the possession has been lost we don't necessarily have to regroup our shape is a 4-1-4-1 and we aren't going to break too often from that shape so I don't feel that we need to regroup but when the possession has been won, we are going to make our counter movements, try and expose the opposition. And when the goalkeeper is in possession, I want him to distribute the ball to the fullback and distribute the ball quickly because on the defensive mentality, sometimes he can take just a bit too long. Out of possession is where things get really, really interesting. We are going to be using tighter marking. We are also going to get stuck in. And for the trigger press, it's going to be on slightly more often. So it's just slightly more often. Certain players are going to be breaking from their position in order to engage in a player because we don't want our players just to be standing still and allowing players to go through them we do also want to engage and then set up our counter attack we are also going to be using offside trap weirdly enough for us it works we are Manchester City so we are asking our defences just to step up a little to catch an opposing striker offside but also 
the line of engagement lower defensive line lower as well you can use this majority of the times but if you're playing against a Bournemouth or if you're playing against a Southampton even a Tottenham Hotspur because Antonio Kante is fairly defensive on this game you could just leave it on standard for both of these things but these lines should never ever get any higher than line of engagement or standard defensive line if you are using this sort of style of play you can only drop it from this sort of position here which is what we did we used lower line of engagement a lower defensive line sometimes we pushed it up to a standard line of engagement and a standard defensive line for the defensive width we are going to leave it on standard because we've got a good defensive coverage in this 4141 shape So those are the instructions for the base tactic. Now we are going to move over to the player roles. But for the player roles, we're just going to look at the completed tactic because it might just be easier for me to explain why I've chosen certain roles. But also we have tweaked some of the team instructions as well. So this is the base and then we're going to go back to the completed version or we're going to go to the completed version just so I can explain some things. So for the completed version. In goal, we do have a sweeper keeper on attack. Now, the reason why we've got him on attack, he likes to take more risk, but he's also quicker in transition. Though we do have distribute the ball quickly, um, sweeper keeper on attack, it just increases that personal tempo for him, but also he can take more risk trying to set up our counter attacks. The back four, we do have a wing back on attack on the left-hand side who has been asked to sit more narrow. Not that this helps massively anyway, but it's just an idea that I have with the central midfield are getting further ahead the inverted winger possibly getting further ahead in a counter attack as well if we're in possession maybe you could just sit a bit more narrowly and kind of protecting this area here it's just an idea that i have not that it helps out massively in central defense we do have one ball playing defender someone that is able or capable of setting up um, counter attacks but we also have a no nonsense um center back self-explanatory he's no nonsense he gets the ball and just lobs it forward like we saw a little bit earlier he plays more direct passes and a lot of the times the aim is the person forward on attack and for the right back he is an inverted wing back on support why use an inverted wing back on support just so we have some midfield coverage or some midfield support again for when our central midfielder goes on the attack or our winger on the right hand side goes on the attack he's just going to cover this area here sitting nicely with that dlp preventing counter attacks now in defensive midfield someone that has a nice passing range the dlp he's going to be hitting the balls in all sorts of areas and setting up our attacks as well now looking at our midfield fault but actually sorry actually sorry he's also going to hold his position in front of that back four not move too far from it and just protecting that back four really now for the midfield four we do have an inverted winger on the left hand side sort of a creative player someone that's creating on the flanks but also someone that's creating in this sort of central areas here especially for that person forward he's going to be taking more risk and staying wider when we do have possession because we want to stretch the pitch for our counter attacks in central midfield we do have a central midfielder on attack playing more direct passes further ahead and taking more risk as well with his passing low percentage passing trying to unlock the opposition's defensive we do have a mazala on attack asks to dribble more as well he's going to be moving into the channels and sort of in this half space so when he does have the ball if he dribbles more in that half space trying to disorganize the opposition then great and then on the right hand side we have a winger a book standard winger who just stays on that right hand side flank preferably being right footed i always struggle to pronounce that word preferably preferably better to be right footed so you could just stay on that right hand side and whip those crosses in and better that he gets to the byline as well and then lastly up top we do have a pressing forward who is key so originally and typically i would just use an advanced forward and if i want him to press more i would just go to the um player instructions and ask him hey press more and get stuck in but it doesn't work the exact same what the pressing forward does really really well is force errors and forcing errors isn't actually a stat so it's not something that you may notice statistically but you will notice it watching the games and again we saw it a little bit earlier with him pressing ericsson and forcing him to play a risky pass forcing that mistake and it allows us to go on that counter attack so a pressing forward is very very key and having a player like Haaland is also very very key so some of the tweaks that we did make we are now playing out from the back it's just something that I've saw watching the game sometimes we pump the ball a little too eagerly and sometimes we could just play out from the back it's not necessarily um tiki tackle football where it's all nice football but sometimes again like Chelsea that we saw against Chelsea sometimes it just means a pass backwards and another pass backwards 
pull in the opposition and then we can just hit that long ball into Haaland and also we are focusing play down the right because we do or we will have a nice sort of overload on the right hand side and if we can keep the AI occupied on that sort of side of the pitch so it will be their left hand side our right half side it then leaves plenty plenty of space for our central midfielder to attack our inverted winger might sometimes come inside but also our wing back on the opposite side can get further forward so it does create space on other areas of the pitch simply just attacking on one side of the pitch also for the be more expressive i might have touched on it a little earlier but it's better to have players with good dribbling good flair technique anticipation and teamwork as well i believe which manchester city have in abundance the person forward ish he should be strong he should be big he can hold up the ball should be fast as well basically the perfect number nine and that is pretty much it when it comes to the specialist players so you kind of want a specialist player in central midfield these two central midfield areas your striker as well your wing back might need to be a specialist player he might need to be very very good at crossing um, at Manchester City we do have Jao Cancelo and we also have Sergio Gomez both I believe the crossings on at least 14 and that is that's basically it when it comes to your defensive players you want good anticipation good acceleration agility as well so they can get to certain areas of the pitch good positioning so they can read the game anticipation that sort of thing as well so that is it for the tactic now we can move over to the results So looking at the results, some of you might want to see how well or how we fared against some of the big teams. Um, against Liverpool, the first game in the Community Shield, this forced some tweaks, and I'm talking major tweaks. This forced some tweaks as we lost 2-0. We really didn't have anything going that game. But then in the very next game, we managed to beat Crystal Palace 7-0 on a defensive mentality. It's absolutely mental. But we did beat Arsenal 3-0 away from home at the Emirates, a very good counter-attacking display. We then lost 4 2 away to Liverpool at Anfield they were very very clinical not that they had many chances they were just very very clinical and there wasn't much that we could have done about that on the day Liverpool were just on it we did beat Manchester United but that was in the Carabao Cup we then went to Old Trafford and beat Manchester United for the second time with Scott McTominay getting sent off in the 94th minute we did beat Chelsea at home 2-0 comfortable win we went away to Tottenham we beat them 1-0 and Ilka Gundogan goal in the 89th minute we then beat Tottenham at home 2-0 um, Kevin De Bruyne getting a double in that game we also went to the bridge and we got a 1-0 win there Rodri scoring in the 29th minute before Jao Cancel getting sent off in the 71st we drew against Against Manchester United at home and then the second time we played Liverpool it ended as a 3-2 win at home we beat PSG in a Champions League final which we can watch the highlights for right now so as you can see there weren't many chances in this game it wasn't like 20 shots to one team and 10 shots to the other in fact we both only had eight shots we had six on target they had three our XG slightly better than theirs but as you can see we did create three clear cuts they had one clear cut and we also created three half chances with them having majority of the possession which we will look at possession stats later on so if we do play this variety has the ball he clears it it goes to Laporte, it falls to Phil Foden. He dribbles with it into that little space. And then a nice free ball to Haaland, 1-0 to Manchester City. Now it's time for PSG's goal. It comes from a corner, far post to McQuinnos, Morata, and that is their clear cut. One of our clear cuts was a penalty. Haaland slots it in. Here's another goal. Phil Foden dribbles with the ball, plays it back to Bernardo Silva. He plays it into Kevin De Bruyne, and whoa, what a finish. And for the last goal, it's a Kevin De Bruyne free kick from deep. Falls to Phil Foden. He slots it in with his head. What a weird and untypical Manchester City goal. So yes, we did win the Champions League in the Premier League. We also won that winning 32 games out of our 38, getting 101 points on the tally. In the FA Cup, we got knocked out in the third round by Wolves. In the Carabao Cup, we got knocked out in the quarterfinal by Fulham. And in the Community Shield, well, you saw we lost 2-0 to Liverpool. Looking at some of these stats just might be my favourite part of this video. So we did score the most goals and had the highest points 
per game for the fewest shots against Manchester City in second place and for the most possession well if we scroll down to the bottom we are joint lowest with 44 percent so we don't need the ball in order to score goals and we don't need the ball well you do need the ball to score goals but you know what I mean you don't need to see a lot of the ball to score goals and you don't need to see a lot of the ball to win the league title in football manager as well for the most tackles won we are high fourth place most dribbles made we are first most clean sheets and fewest conceded both Manchester City for the top goal scorer Harlem with 34 Kevin De Bruyne with 23 Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne are both on 17 assists Jack Grealish on nine for the most man of the match awards Harlan on 12 then Kevin De Bruyne most key passes Kevin De Bruyne then Bernardo Silva I mean a lot of Manchester City players here most tackles won Kevin De Bruyne look how well he played most dribbles made Bernardo Silva and Phil Foden in that list most clean sheets Edison and for the viewers conceded Edison comes in second with 20. So I've had to move my head a little bit just so you guys can see this a little bit more clearly. Now when it comes to scoring our goals we can look at the assist. This is our assist location but when it comes to the assist types you can see for short passes it's only three compared to crosses on 12 and through balls on 23. Square part, square balls as well on one so you can see how we created a lot of our goals which was either by through balls, crossing or sometimes a set piece. We scored four from corners and eight from free kicks. Also when it comes to looking at the formations that we are best against, against a 4-4-2, a 4-4-2 actually um, fares pretty decent against us but a 4-2-3-1 is pretty bad. We create a chance every 46 minutes and a chance against us is every 265 minutes. So playing against a 4-2-3-1 you should use this tactic because it obviously works against a 4-3-3 as well. It works but we are creating a chance every 63 minutes and a chance against against every 117 minutes against the 442 we um, create a chance every 79 minutes and against every 95 so it's a bit closer against the 442 but against the 4231 we pretty much exploit that very very well but also a 433 which a lot of teams use in football manager but unfortunately that wraps up this video i hope you guys have enjoyed it i really really enjoyed recording this and talking to you guys as well so if you are new or you haven't yet make sure you are subscribed make sure you leave a comment don't forget to send in your request but also leave a like on this video really help the engagement now to end this video what we can do or what i can do is just watch a game highlight just to end the video and we can just have fun leaving out i'll see you guys soon stay safe and peace out here's laporte on the ball plays it to john stones john stones is gonna look for jao cancelo plays a lovely pass to phil Foden. he finds kevin de Bruyne and what an attack and what a goal for Manchester City. Here's Phil Foden now running towards the byline, but the ball falls to Bernardo. Oh, was that a nutmeg that we saw? Phil Foden, Kevin De Bruyne. What a finish. Now for the third goal, here is John Stones. Plays it to Jao Cancelo. Plays it into Kevin De Bruyne. Oh, look at the football. Look at the link up. I mean, I say this is defensive football, but that, that was better than Pep Guardiola. And we whipped in the ball far post. John Stones, what else to end the game? but a set piece go and that wraps up a 4-0 win for Manchester City I'll see you guys soon stay safe peace out